Good morning, Innovation Church. How are you this morning? Are you excited to be here? Beautiful summer day, amen? All right. Hey, would you stand as we continue to worship this morning? Hopefully some of you were jamming in the car and getting your praise on. I hope you were, right? If you're not, if you haven't done that recently, there's tons of CDs here that were produced by the Innovation Band. Uh, Lauren has her own CD. There's a couple people, and just go get them. Support, support Innovation Church, amen?
up here for a minute. Just keep the beat. You know, I keep looking over and I see this, this whole bunch of people that are getting ready to be baptized today. Amen. I just want to remind you, you know, I can, in my mind, I can still remember the day I was baptized. You know, and, and this is going to be a glorious day for you. As, you, as we sing this song and as we, we talk about, you know, um, it's a glorious day. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Just praise God in anticipation for you going and make that declaration that you've already made a decision for. Amen. So this is for you as we go back into the bridge, Joe. Just worship God and give him praise and thanks. Amen. Hold up, here we go. Innovation Church. For those joining online, welcome. Online and those that are here today, we appreciate you taking the time and choosing to come to Innovation Church. And I'm sure you're, you're already blessed. Amen. Oh, you didn't sound too sure. So guys, we need to do a, a better job of, uh, of, of encouraging the Holy Spirit to just sweep this place up this morning. <laughs> Amen. God is good. Amen. Feel free to praise God. Simply put, get your praise on. Get your praise on.
meu cara Aleluia You know, this is a great opportunity right now As the pastor and deacons make their way Themselves uh, make their way up front at the altar We just sang about Keep playing that, guys Keep playing that progression Come here, please We just sang about Jesus, you know Our healer Amen Our mighty God This is an opportunity for us to, to step out in faith and say, we only, not only did we speak it, but we're going to act upon the words that we just spoke. Amen. We're going to put our action, join that together with our faith and say, God, do something. Do something miraculously today. We're, we're trusting on you. We're, we're depending on you, oh God, that you will change whatever circumstances. Amen. So let, let, your, let your action join with your faith this morning as you step out. And allow the Lord to, to use your pastors and deacons to, to minister to you this morning. Amen. Lord, let your spirit reign upon your people today. Let your spirit come and move over us. Have free reign. Bring down upon your people this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. Let the rain of your presence fall on me every day that I live with every breath I breathe. Let the rain of your presence fall on me everywhere that I go, Lord, let your presence flow, rain on me. Come on, let's sing that. Let the rain of your presence fall on me. Every day that I live, with every breath I breathe, let the rain of your presence fall on me. Everywhere that I go, Lord, let your presence flow. Rain on me. Love the vine. Joy on speed.
Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just thank him. He's worthy. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit moving in our lives, in and through us and amongst us, bringing the love and fellowship that we so enjoy when we gather together as the body of Christ. Lord, we know we're here by divine appointment. We're here according to your sovereign plan. Every person here, everyone with us on live streaming, every person who would ever hear this message or be a part of this service, it's a divine appointment. And we're here because you've called us to be here and that you are going to do something. You are going to break through in a new way. You are going to create within us a clean heart. You are going to build our homes, our families, our marriages. You're going to strengthen us. You're going to meet that financial need. You're going to meet that relational need. You're going to move in us in such a way as to bring peace that passes understanding. And Lord, for those with physical needs, Lord, you have already seen and already are the answer to that physical need. We thank you for the doctors. We thank you for the technicians. We thank you for the nurses. And we, we ask your blessing upon them. We recognize they do the very best they can, but you are the great physician. And we trust in you with all of our hearts. We're not going to lean on our own understanding, but we acknowledge and put you first. And we know you'll direct our steps. We pray for that healing touch that that individual, whoever it may be here in this house or those who are joining with us online, that healing touch in their lives that they so desperately need. Let it come now in the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, meet that need. And all of these things, we thank you because you do all things well. And Lord, as we seek to trust you, as we seek to walk with you, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would guide us, would direct us, would make the way clear. And Lord, that you are the author and finisher of our faith. You are the one who directs our steps. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You are the Lamb of God and the Lion of Judah. You are the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way. And you are the one that will continue to change our hearts, transforming us from the inside, rebuilding that relationship, moving forward in that miraculous way. In Father, it, like no one else can do, you do it because you do it to honor your son, Jesus Christ, and the great love and compassion you have upon your people. We ask, Lord, that you would have your way in our lives and in this place, and we thank you for it, and we ask it in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Come on, let's praise him. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Come on, give him a shout. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I'm going to ask the band to stay up here with me for a moment. Everybody else, go ahead and have a seat. Let's continue to play that music. I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Who's going to help us with this thing? Let's bring this down right now, and we're going to baptize some folks. It would be okay if we just baptize some people right now. You know, they're wearing shirts. It says, I have decided. They've made a decision, and this decision is so important, and we want to honor that decision today. So we are just so thankful that this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. So I think we're going to start with the ladies. We're going to put that screen up a little bit more. Just a little bit. There you go. That's great. Thank you. Come on, give it up for Pastor Don. Now, I see Victor's in there with you. That's just in case he's your backup. Okay, I get it. Now, one of the things we do here, uh, and we can bring the house lights up just a little bit. One of the things we do here is we baptize according to the testimony of faith. 
And so that testimony has already been received. Uh, this is uh, Joanna, and she's already met with Pastor Don, and they've shared uh, about the, being baptized, about serving Jesus Christ, about walking with Him. Uh, we baptize according to your testimony of faith and the authority of the name of Jesus. And then, of course, we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So for Joanna Williamson, God bless you. Are you ready? Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now we have Carmen Rodriguez coming in in just a moment. Come on, give it up for Carmen. I have decided to follow Jesus. Now we have Melissa. It's crowded. It's okay. They take their time. We don't want anyone slipping or falling. Okay, give it up for Melissa Bosman. got Vivian Hamilton. Come on, give it up for Vivian. It's hard to get in. <laughs> yes, Jesus. tell you she gets around with a walker and has difficulty and she just got into that was baptized God bless you God bless you amen amen we have Stacy Barkalo come on give it up for Stacy Okay, so we got some guys coming in. How about, I think it's John, John Hamilton. Come on, John. Give it up for John. Michael there? 
Okay, Michael Laferge. Come on, give it up for Michael. Conroy there? Come on, Conroy. It's Conroy Williamson. Conroy. Conroy. Woo! Yeah! Hallelujah! Praise God. Hallelujah! Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on. Praise God. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon, I'm like the band guy. Every time you get them going and you stop, you get <laughs> Well, Conroy, who was the last guy baptized, actually made his decision. He was, he was up all night because he had been baptized. I don't think he'd mind me saying this. He'd been baptized when he was 12 years old. And it kind of drifted. And I said, well, you know, he's come back as an adult, a follower of Jesus Christ, and he wanted to be baptized. I said, hey, do it. Do it. God will honor it. God will honor your decision. It's up to you. And so he wrestled with that last night. I don't know if he had any sleep, but we just woke him up in the tank. So, <laughs> amen. Amen. So we're just so thankful for all of those who have been baptized. And if we have any family members who are here because you wanted to see your loved one get baptized, I hope that was a very special moment for you. Uh, let me tell you that, that the, everything that just happened was on live streaming as well. <clears throat> and that means it's also recorded. And so you could go back and you could watch that during the week as well. And, and it'll continue to be available on our website. Just, just wanted you to know that. Thank you, band. Thank you, uh, Mark, for <laughs> putting people's names in there. That was cool. That was great. But well, we have a ministry here called HK Missions. It's uh, something uh, that... Is Dawn in the house? Is Dawn here? Where, where are you, Dawn? Not my Dawn. Not my Dawn. Oh, Dawn's on vacation. See, I didn't tell her I was going to do this, but we were going to do it anyhow. But Dawn's just had this beautiful ministry, and she was interviewed on TV. We're going to show you that little video clip right now, and then also uh, a little bit more information on video. So please uh, pay attention to the screen. Thank you. group Girls on the Run is helping make a hospital stay easier for local children. The group raised $1,000 through its running program, which is going to the HK Mission as activity pouches for children in the pediatric ward at Pocono Medical Center. I vowed one day when my children were well enough that I would pay back the kindness that was shown to us over at Pocono Medical Center. So about a year and a half, a mission was born. The H is after my son Hunter and the K after Kendra. And we've been... Um, doing this for, for, we've delivered over to the hospital about 15 times. We've delivered about, um, I want to say about 3,000 pouches thus far. It's just a, a way of getting the girls out there, socializing, learning about themselves, being healthy, um, learning how to be a good friend, learning how to be confident, learning to believe in, in themselves, that they can do anything, that they can believe that they can do anything that they want to do. Girls on the Run members assembled the activity pouches yesterday at the East Stroudsburg Elementary School.
morning, church. How's everybody doing? Blessed. Who said blessed? Someone Teresa is a blessed. Oh, man, it's good to be here with you guys this morning. Exciting to be in the house of God. Amen? Very cool. We got a lot going on. Listen, if it's your first time here with us, uh, my name is Josh. I'm the associate pastor here, and uh, we just want to welcome you. We're so glad that you decided to come and spend a Sunday morning with us. When you came in, you received a VIP packet inside of which there's a connection card. If you would do me such a great kindness as to take that out, write your name, some contact information on there, and just let us know about your visit today. At the end of the service, you can take that card back to the VIP table where we have some gifts to give you, some music, some refreshments, things like that. But ultimately, really what we want to do is we just want to connect with you. We want to let you know that you're loved, pray with you. Whatever we can do to make sure you had an incredible time at church this morning, that's what we want to do. And for the rest of you, please go ahead and put your name on that card. Put it in the offering bucket when it goes by. We would appreciate that. Uh, it would be really great and helpful. And we are now in summer, full swing, ready to go. It's so funny, in first service, Patty almost slipped into Let It Go from Frozen. She almost did, I heard it. I'm hoping it happens again, but I almost just did it for summer. I was like, you know, I was going to pull out the vibrato. And you guys with kids don't know what I'm talking about probably, but I've seen that movie like 5,000 times. It is my personal nightmare. But uh, we are full swing in summer, and with summer comes what we've been talking about the last few weeks, our summer schedule starting next week going through July and August, where we are going to be combining worship experiences and meeting in one service at 10 a.m. So no more 9 and 11, just 10 o'clock, which means we're going to fill out the auditorium with even more chairs. We're going to stuff everybody in here, and then we're going to just get the whole family together to celebrate and have a good time. I'm looking forward to it. I cannot wait to play bass in this room packed with you guys and just worship our God. I think it's going to be a blast. So that is happening uh, starting next week and going through July and August. Also next week, we're going to have special guests with us, Missionaries to China, the Kleins. They're a wonderful ministry family. They're going to be here with us sharing what God has been doing. You can clap for them. You're talking about heroes of the faith with people like this, absolute heroes of the faith. And they're going to be here next week sharing. They've been overseas now for four years and now that they're back uh, on furlough is what they call it, so we're going to be hearing from them next week. Uh, following that week, in two weeks, my brother Nathan will be here bringing the word, so I'm excited about that as well. Uh, we all love Pastor Nathan and what they're doing out in Clarity, Los Angeles, so uh, be sure you're here. we got cool stuff going on as the summer begins, uh, both on Sundays but also on Wednesdays. We normally do life groups, adult life groups, kids stuff on Wednesday nights, and starting this Wednesday... Uh, we have July 4th celebration, so it's not going to be on the 4th, that's Friday, on July uh, 2nd, that's Wednesday, this Wednesday, come on out to the church, 7 o'clock, we're going to have bounce houses, face painting, food, uh, cotton candy, popcorn, fireworks, all kinds of fun, uh, ridiculous things, and Matt and I are going to be doing the fireworks as we typically do, and we've already got them, he sent me a picture last night of this giant bundle of death, and uh, we cannot wait to get out there and, and cause mayhem and trouble and you guys will enjoy our risk of limb and life. It's going to be a good time. So that is this week and then the following week, uh, which is, what does that make it, July 9th? I believe July 9th, if I could do basic math, 2 plus 7. July 9th, we're going to be starting two summer courses here at the church, two different life groups. One is I was broke, now I'm not. That's with Bob Gurnitz, who is an incredibly gifted teacher and great finance seer. And he's going to be doing great, great things. So if you want to be a part of that, there's still a, a little sign up on your chair. You can fill that out. Let us know you're interested. Uh, it says on here, I was informed of this last week by Bob because he knows the answers and I make the mistakes. I had put on here $10 for the booklet and an optional $10 for the book. And he said, no, 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 this is serious. There is no optional. If you're coming, you're coming all the way. So it's supposed to be $20 for both the booklet and the book. No option included. So he, he's a tyrant like that. And so it's just, you know, he, he reprimanded me very harshly this week. So that's going to happen. The other class is a course on the book of Galatians uh, starting again two weeks from now. And that's going to be taught by Hope Siglin. I'm not sure if Hope's in the room, but Hope is a gifted teacher. Oh, there she is. Yay for granddaughters. Her granddaughter just pointed her out. I hope is an incredible teacher or bringer of the word. So she's going to be speaking for eight weeks on Galatians, and uh, it's just an incredible time. So if you're interested in continuing to study and develop over the summer, you've got those two courses starting on Wednesdays in two weeks. Oh, gosh, we did baptism, so I can't go into that. So I'm going to ask Dad, my dad, to come on up. He's going to come hang out for one second. 
And as he's on his way up, I'll remind you that this is the first uh, of the month, so you have your calendars on your seats. Be sure to stay apprised of what's going on here in the church. And just so you guys know, a big reason we do the calendar, a lot of people think, well, we know what's happening, we see it, you hear about it on Sundays, but a big reason we do calendars and things like that is so that you can tell your neighbors and other friends and people in your lives what's going on, and you can be aware of what you have to offer through the church and what we have available. So take advantage of that, please. It's on the chairs, uh, as is the Independence Day Bash Volunteer Forum. If you still want to help for this coming Wednesday, to, you know, uh, I don't know, rally children or yeah, uh, yeah. take my place doing the fireworks. I mean, you know. <laughs> but there's but a know, lot of things you could help with help any with. of these things, you know, there's, we could still use your help. So just check it off, put it in the offering as it comes by, and we'll get you involved on Wednesday. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm inviting the kids. Is that it's what we're going to do? Yep. Okay, kids. How many kids have brown bags with them today? Okay, why don't you come on up here and just kind of sit on the floor right over here. All the kids that have their brown bags. For those who are with us online, this is something we do maybe four times a year. And, and the goal behind it is that the children have something in this bag. Are you going to stay with me I this came time? Back. <laughs> no, I'm not staying with you, but the church needs to know what happened in the first worship experience. <laughs> it was awful. It was, it was as close to failure as I've ever seen him come in the brown bag sermon. So kids, take heart. He's already down on the ground. Just give him one more little kick. You're going to beat Pastor at the brown bag sermon. <laughs> no, that's this not could the attitude. Make history. That's not the attitude. What are you telling these kids? They Don't need they... to know. Oh, come on. He didn't do so good. In no, it, I, well, I got a little stumped, but, but we pulled it off. We pulled it off. Okay, listen, I'm going to come on down. Bring the bags right up here, and I have just a couple of rules, okay? And, uh, and, um, and here are the basic rules. Number one, yeah, go ahead, bring it over. Number one, <clears throat> I can't pick every bag. So the first rule is I'm going to pick three bags, and the rule is if I don't pick your bag, you cannot get angry at me. Okay? Everybody agreed? Okay. And then once I pick the three bags, um, I'm going to open them up. I'm going to put whatever was in them here. I'm going to show them to everybody that, that's with us today. And, then, and somehow I'm going to help bring a biblical story, a story that helps us get closer to God from whatever those three things are, okay? If I do really well, you're going to all applaud and say, that was just amazing. Try it with me. Now say it. That was amazing. You've got to applaud. Applaud. That was amazing, Pastor. Amazing. And if I do really bad, you're going to all applaud and say, that was amazing, Pastor. Okay. So <clears throat> now if I don't pick your bag, it doesn't mean we're not going to see what's in it, because after I'm done, I'll ask you to take out whatever was in your bag and kind of show me, because I'm always really curious what was in these things. So I'm going to come down over here, uh, and uh, remember, I can only pick three. So the first rule is you can't get upset with me if I don't pick yours. So I'm going to come over to this side first. I'm going to get this one, and I'm going to pick one from uh, right here in front of me. And I'm going to reach way back and probably grab a child. Nope, there it is. And, oh, there's the third. Okay, so these are the three that I'm going to use. Now, it doesn't mean that these others aren't important. There's one right in front of me that says, pick me, please. I'm sorry I had my eyes closed. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, was that yours? Oh, I'm so sorry. And it's, look at that. It's so nice with a smiley face and everything. If I need some help, if I can't get these three to work and I need some help, I'll grab that one. So... Here, here's we go. Here, okay, here's what we got. We've got a Glowworks light stick. Okay, is that actually in here? So this has never been opened. Whose is this? Whose is this? This is yours? A glow, so this is in here right now? I'm not going to take it out, but it's a glow. So a glow stick. It glows in the dark? Is that what this does? Does it glow in the dark? Okay. So that's the first thing we've got. The second thing we've got is... Um, <laughs> it's a, uh, a nose protector. It's a, is that a, is, who, whose is this? Whose is this? Caleb. You did it to me, Caleb. Oh, Gene, what is this? An emergency <laughs> cup. So it's an emergency cup for like getting a drink of water? Okay, an emergency cup for getting a drink of water, a glow stick. Caleb, you're so cute. And a, aww, an angel bear. Is that an angel bear? Whose is this? Is that an angel bear? Is that what it's called? Does he have a name? What's his name? Halo. This is Halo the angel bear. 
Okay. This one makes it hard, you see. I was doing good until you gave me this, and now I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. Okay, look at those eyes. Everybody go, aww. Aww. Okay. Well, what happens with little bears? Now, if it's an angel bear, that means that he's an angel. Is, is, that, is he an angel? So he's an angel that looks like a bear. So is he an angel for other bears? I just want to know. I'm curious about things like this. So, okay. So, so God made an angel. This is, so he wasn't like a, a real bear that died and became an angel, because we know that that's not how things work. He is an angel, but he looks like a bear. Does everybody get that? So we have an angel that looks like a bear. We have a glow stick, and we have an emergency cup. And I am completely blank two times in a row, two times in a row. Okay, so, well, <laughs> grab another bag. One more bag, okay, please. Well, it was the pick-me-please bag. I had to take the pick-me-please bag, so I, I need, okay. <laughs> what is this? Does it open? Can I? Oh, okay. It unscrews, and and this for. Oh, okay. 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 This is. This is. No, no. The another bag is just gonna make it worse. Okay. Okay. Sometimes angels come as messengers. They come to tell us something that God wanted us to know. And when angels come, for example, there was an angel that came to Mary and told her that she was going to have a baby and the baby would be Jesus. And we don't know what that angel looked like. He may have looked just like this angel bear. <laughs> no one knows. So the angel comes to us and gives us a message from God. And that message from God begins to work in our lives so that ultimately we begin to glow. Can you say that with me? We begin to glow. Because inside of us, if we're not careful, it can get a little dark. Do you know what I'm talking about? We get angry. And have any of you ever gotten angry? Yeah, okay. Or we, you know, we get upset with someone. That's, we get a little dark. So when God sends a messenger, he wants us to lighten up a little bit and so inside we get a little lighter and what that does <laughs> is it it helps us to see better okay because we begin to see things the way God wants us to see things don't shake your head no at me you're gonna applaud no matter what I say We're, we start to see better and our eyes you know, Jesus talked about having good eyes or bad eyes. Our eyes start to look really beautiful to God, okay? And so we begin to see the things that God wants us to see. And he gives us something. You know what it's called? It's called, do you know what it's called? What's in this cup? It's called not an emergency cup. You're not helping me. It's, what would you drink out of this? Water. Water. And the Bible gives us something called living water. Water that changes us from the inside out. It's not like regular water you drink, but when you have an emergency, let me tell you, you want living water. You want the kind of water that can really help you to be the person that God wants you to be. So let's see what we have here. <clears throat> Here's the story. Okay, you ready to applaud? Here's the story. An angel comes to you and says, my child, I love you, and God wants you to know that you are loved. And this is true. I don't know if he looks like this, but God wants you to know that you are loved. And inside, you just lighten up. You begin to feel good about yourself. You're not so angry anymore. You're actually feeling pretty happy because God loves you. And your eyes begin to see the things that God wants you to see. Because before that, all you saw were problems and things that made you angry, and now you're seeing things clearly. 
don't you laugh at me young lady now you're seeing things clearly and here's the thing about living water is that when you drink it you only need the tiniest little bit and it just bubbles and bubbles and fills you up and there's so much living water that it actually flows to everyone around you and gives them life and that is the story and everybody applauded wasn't that great wasn't that wasn't that better than Pastor Dawn no no okay okay quick show me what's in these bags real fast everybody take out what you had no no I can't do it you have to do it okay we had a rock oh I could have we had a rock we had a, is that for me thank you peppermint patty no no I'll give it back to you I can have it oh thank you I have oh I'll keep this too this is a uh, a PlayStation thing a, uh, a, a scissors and a knife there and we had what was that more makeup see beautiful eyes we had a pen we had a tie for when I used to have long hair we had we had a fish okay we have keys we have a what was that a candle a candle and a pen I recognize that pen you got that right out of the back of a chair and then we had a card and the card is all about 25th Street Easton Dental. This was an advertisement. Okay. Hey, now whose bear is this? Whose angel? Thank you for the angel. And whose glow stick was it? Thank you for the glow stick. And whose makeup was this? Thank you for the makeup. And hey, here's your cup. You no. pass this over. Pass it over. You sure I can keep this York peppermint patty? Are you sure? Are you sure? I could, okay. So. See, because what happens is when the angel gives you a good message like that and your heart lightens up and, and you begin to feel, you know, all like you can see things like for the first time and everything is so wonderful in your life and there's living water, you get fresh breath. <laughs> Should I stop now? <laughs> okay. God bless you guys. Go ahead and have a seat. Thank you for coming up. <laughs> Could you take this for me? Just take it. Amen. Well, we are going to, uh, you all feel like giving now? We're going to receive the offering. You all feel like giving now? We're going to receive the offering. In this church and in many churches around the world, the offering is a time of worship and praise. Uh, we give, and of course you understand, and we try to make it very clear, all the money, every, every, every penny that's given here is used to change lives. It's all about families and lives being changed and marriages being restored. Anything we can do to try to help and support uh, this community of believers and then the community that we find ourselves in. So we're going to pray. We're also going to pray for another one of our churches, our family uh, members uh, here in the sister churches, Cherry Lane United Methodist. So we're going to pray over that church as well. So let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for all that you're doing. I thank you, Lord, for the kids that uh, come up and, and put up with me when I try to make up these silly messages. But, Lord, it was actually a good message. You do speak to us, and it changes us from the inside out. We're so thankful for that. And, Lord, we ask your blessing upon this offering, that you would use it for the furtherance of your kingdom, of your purpose, and your plan. We pray that your people would be generous, not just here, but in life in general, that they would continue to be generous with their love, with their compassion, and their forgiveness, uh, and the wonderful good news of faith in Jesus Christ, that we would share these things openly with everyone that we meet. And, Father, we do think of this church, Cherry Hill uh, Methodist Church, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, be with them today, their leadership. We pray for their pastors. We pray for their deacons, their elders, all of their leadership. We pray for the body of believers that meets there, that you would uh, move upon them in such a powerful way that they would never become discouraged in well-doing, but that they would continue to walk with you and trust you with all of their hearts. And, Lord, for all of us gathered here at Innovation, help us to understand uh, that we are your sons and we are your daughters and we seek to walk humbly with you. And we thank you, Lord, for this gift you've given us through Jesus Christ. And we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen.
As there's a little rearranging going on up here, uh, I want to introduce our next speaker. For many of you, you know uh, Patty Manger very well, and uh, you're very excited uh, that she's here to share God's Word uh, with us. For, for some of you, for some of you, you, you maybe be, will be meeting her for the first time, so I thought it might be helpful to... Uh, tell you something about her. Now, I'm not going to tell that story. I already told that story in the first gathering. I'm going to leave this up here for you because I love you. The peppermint patty is yours if you get hungry during the message. We'll open up the water for you here too. No, no, there's things you should know. I'll tell you this. Our staff right now is, you know, we get along. You know, when Patty was here, I don't know. You had to be careful because <clears throat> Patty is one of these persons that if you play a practical joke on her, she will destroy you. <laughs> I'll give you an example before I introduce her. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> we had these posters that we hung around the building uh, for a couple of years uh, of, of people around the world. And there was this one poster. It was huge. It was huge. And we had a, a few of them. And unfortunately, the woman in the poster, I'm sure she was very sweet and loved by her family, but she really looked like, you know, uh, an evil witch of some sort. It was just, she really looked scary. And Patty would ask us not to put that poster out. Well... You can't say things like that. <clears throat> well, at the time, Pastor Nathan, who's at, in Los Angeles now, was here, and he, he decided, I'm pretty sure it was Nathan, maybe Pastor Jason, who was here at the time. It wasn't me, because I don't do things like this. I really fear retaliation. So, and I know Patty pretty well. And, and so they put these posters up. One, I think, was right in your office. So as soon as you walked in your office, there she was looking at you. But the really funny one was when you go into the bathroom and, you, and, and she sat in the stall and closed the door. There she was, like right there, looking at her in the bathroom. And so I was just wondering what was going to happen, uh, you know, what would the result of this decision be to, to give Patty a hard time. And it didn't take long before Pastor Nathan's office got flied. And I don't know how else to say it other than every inch Every inch, ceiling and walls of his office had a, a plastic fly about that big glued on it. So his office was covered with flies. And who's the lord of the flies? Satan. So what she was saying is, you mess with me and I'm going to turn you over to the devil. That's what that was about. That was the message I got. And so from that time, I've never messed with Patty. <laughs> That wasn't in your heart at all, was it? You just wanted to put flies on every square inch of his room. But I, I, I always appreciated that. I, <laughs> let me also say that Patty um, was here before I got here. She's been, she was a foundation in this ministry and has been for many years. And she actually started out with me uh, many years ago as a, as a senior secretary, making sure everything functioned well. But then God called her into the ministry, and she went and got credentialed with the Assemblies of God, the fellowship we're a part of, and through the credentialing process, ultimately came to be on staff here as an associate pastor. Uh, I always knew she could teach, but she's just gotten better and better and better. She's an incredible teacher and preacher, and I'm very honored to be able to introduce you back here to the pulpit. Come on up and share what God has placed on your heart. You're a brat. Can I say that? I, you know, you just brought me back down memory lane big time. I forgot all about that. And just so you all know, I was not trying to say that anyone was Satan and it was not Lord of the Flies. 
I just had to get Pastor Nathan back, and it was supposed to be, if I remember correctly, one of the plagues. Um, and then I had a sign saying, uh, this is plague number three, next plague to follow or something, just to scare them a little, that there might be something else coming, like frogs or something. But um, yeah, good times. <laughs> Yes, first service, he told everyone about how I never voted for him when he first came. So he's really been, uh, it's just driving me crazy. But anyway, I'm so glad to be here. Um, yeah, there's a lot of wonderful, happy memories of Pastor Dawn and Pastor Kolar, Charles. And uh, I just, I miss all of you. It's so neat to see all the faces of so many of you that I have thought about and missed and prayed for over the year. But um it's been, it's been a little over a year since I've been gone. I attended this church for 25 years, for those of you that didn't know who I was. Um, and I've just been so blessed. And let me just say one thing. I moved to North Carolina to the south, and nobody, nobody can, can have church like you guys have church here. Just let me say that. I have been to a lot of churches. That's the Bible Belt, a lot of churches down there. Um, Mark, I don't know where Mark is. The worship is incredible. Um, I, I miss that. I miss that. I miss, I didn't get to hear your message. I got to hear the little kid message, but I, you know, it's just brought back memories. And um, you guys, if you don't realize it, you are very, very blessed here. So just remember that. And um, nothing like innovation, nothing at all. But I want to go ahead and start out in prayer. Lord, again, I just thank you, and Lord, you know how much I love you, and Lord, I know that there are so many here who also feel the same way, who love you and just desire to get closer to you and get to know, Lord, not only what it is that you want them to do in life, but Lord, just to get to know you and know how awesome you are and how you are there for anything we go through, any kind of trials, any kind of tribulations, anything that we go through, Lord, we know that you are there and you will give us the power, you will give us the grace to endure, and Lord, we just thank you and praise you for everything that you're about to do here today, and I ask right now, Lord, that you speak through me, give me the words that you want to say, because again, I don't know anyone's heart, only you do, and I just give you glory right now, and I just praise your holy name. Amen. Amen. And I just want to start out by saying that I did move to North Carolina, Charlotte area, and it's kind of a melting pot of um, cultures. There's a lot of, there's people from the north, there's people from the south, the east, the west, I mean, it's just a mix. But where I work is further north, um, further out of the way, and really, really more into, the people there are real into the deep south. I mean, they have the southern draw, the whole thing. And I have learned so much from them and realized that there's so many differences between up here and there. And some of the differences, I started to think about them. For instance, with food, how many of you have heard of grits? Okay. How many of you eat grits for breakfast every morning? Every morning. One southerner over here. Well, the, the, I'm not kidding you. Every single morning, you're supposed to have grits. Now, anybody who's listening from where I'm from is probably going to go, that's not true, but we'll just go with it. Um, liver mush. Anybody hear of liver mush? Liver mush is huge down there, and it's exactly as it sounds. Liver and mush. And you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. I'm telling you, for breakfast every morning, we've got grits and we've got liver mush, and that's, you know, how they go. Country music is huge. If you don't like country music, there is something seriously wrong with you. I mean, they love country music. There's a song that I never heard of before I got down there. How many of you heard? Chew Tobacco Spit. Chew Tobacco Spit. Chew Tobacco... I just, if I hear it one more time, I'm going to scream. And th this is the kind of stuff that we live with down in the south, besides the heat. So there's a lot of differences. It's really an awesome place to live, but there are differences in the people. The one thing I want to share today is that even though there's a lot of differences between northerners and southerners, 
one of the things that we all have in common is we all can agree that we go through trials, tribulations, we go through things that are, that we go through tough times, we go through discouraging times, we go through times that, you know, we just feel like maybe our, our prayers are hitting the ceiling and the Lord is just not listening or is he even there. We all go through these things and I think that across the board, anyone who is trying to follow the Lord can agree that this is, this, this is the case. But the key with any of this, these situations is to know what to do before they happen. You know, Jesus said in the Bible, in John 16, he said, in this life you will have trouble, but, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus is telling us that, yeah, you're going to have trials. You're not going to be exempt. There's not one of you that, you know, God says, well, I like her better. I'm, you know, I'm going to skip over her. Every one of us is going to go through things. And the key is, again, to make sure you're ready for them. And that's what I'm going to teach you today. Um, I'm supposed to preach, but I'm still a teacher at heart, so I'm going to teach you this. But one of the stories that started out reminding me about this, the importance of this, was one day my family and I decided to go ride the rapids. And I used to love riding rapids. If, you know, I've never been on the serious stuff. I know Charles has been on some heavy-duty stuff. Mine's a joke next to that. But to me, they're rapids. And we went on a trip, and I remember going, and the, the, the instructor said, OK, everybody, I want you to sit down. Before you get in the boat, there's a couple things I need to let you know. And he said, just make sure you stay in the boat and if for some reason now you're never going to, this is never going to happen. He said, never happens very rarely. But if for some reason you get thrown from the boat, just remember, stay calm and put your feet first. So you don't hit the rocks, obviously, on your head and everything. So, you know, but, but that never happens. Never, never. But I just have to tell you that. So and then we're getting in the boat. So he says, remember, just avoid the rocks and keep your, and stay in the boat. So, of course... We're with my family. We have no idea what we're doing. We don't know how to steer. We ran right into the rocks. I went flying, and the next thing I know, I'm hearing water gurgling. I'm down below the surface somewhere, disoriented, didn't know where I was. And immediately when I came up, I realized I saw the rapid. We were in the middle of the rapids, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what do I do? And immediately this, I could sense this panic starting to take over me. And at the same time, I heard the instructor's voice in the back of my head say, keep calm and put your feet first. So immediately it kicked in. I put my feet first and I was okay. You know, they came and got me and all that. Um, but my point is, is that we go through trials in life. We go through things that are going to hit us hard that we don't even expect coming. We may go through even seasons of depression or discouragement, things that emotionally that are hitting us, broken relationships, financially. We may lose our job. We may hate our job. We may go through, uh, you know, in school, things with our teachers or our classes. We're going to all go through things that are emotionally going to upset us, that are going to drain us, that are going to discourage us and bring us down. And the, the key, again, is to make sure you know what to do first. And I have seen, and I'm sure you have too, so many sad cases of people who have given up, who have committed suicide, or they've gone into drugs or drinking, or just spiraled down roads that they didn't need to go down because they weren't ready for these trials. They didn't know how to get ready in the Lord. And I just want to tell you, um, I've been through some stuff, and <laughs> the past couple years have been pretty heavy, and I have learned so much that I, I am so grateful that I've been able to lean back on the training that I had before the trial came. So that's why I want to encourage you, make sure you're ready for it. And I want to start, the title of my message is actually Keep Calm and Carry On. How many of you, if we can show that, how many of you are familiar with the saying or have seen this poster? A few more than first service, not that many. I'm surprised because I'm wondering if it's just a big southern thing or what. But we, it was everywhere down south. I mean, we saw that all over the place. Now, this is, um, I'll tell you about what this poster means in a minute. But we also saw some other posters floating around and mugs and things with the same idea. So here's some ideas I thought you might enjoy. Keep calm and call your lawyer. Keep calm and call Batman. Stay alive and avoid zombies, which... You know, and then, of course, I hate keep calm posters. It just got so bad that, you know, after a while, you're, like, so sick of them. Now, I am under the understanding that Matt Johnson... 
Could you stand up and turn around? I love this guy. Look what he's got on the back of his shirt. Keep calm and return fire. <laughs> I love it. He knew the title of my message, and he wore that shirt and honored me, and I love it. Because, well, that's another message. I'm going to go start going into, well, yeah, you got to take fire at Satan. you got to keep calm. you got to, you know, but we won't go there. But anyway, I think that is awesome. So thank you for wearing that. But anyway, the original poster, we can pass on to the, yeah. <laughs> The original poster actually was produced by the British government in 19, I think it was, it was 39, right before World War II was beginning. Um, Germany had been invading all over the place, as we know, and they were threatening to invade Britain. Well, Britain, actually the government decided to issue these posters, a series of three that they were going to put out there to help the morale of the people. And two of the posters are these two, Freedom is in Peril, Defend it with all your might, your courage, cheerfulness, resolution will bring us victory. These were two posters that they hung all around the cities and towns everywhere to try to get people to, to just realize that, you know, they're going to invade, but this is what you can do, um, and to try to just to get their morale up. Well, they didn't go over very well, but, you know, needless to say, they were hung up. Well, then they had this third poster, which is the Keep Calm, Carry On poster. They kind of had it in the wings. And their plan was not to release it, not to put it out, unless Germany did invade. And they really thought they were. Um, so what happened was Germany actually didn't invade. This was put in the archives, was never used. And somebody in a bookstore or something found it, and then it kind of took off from there. But the point is, is that this is the government's, this is, was their answer to poison gas, bombing of cities that were going to come, people were going to actually, you know, I mean, could you imagine your neighbor's house gets blown up and, you know, or you hear there's poison gas that was just released. Are you going to be able to just keep calm and carry on? I mean, that really, before it was even thought of, is, is I mean, just not going to work. But that was their plan. That was the world's plan. Now, God obviously has a better plan. That's why I love this saying. I love it. I, I, um, to me, it's wonderful if you do it God's way. And God has a way, and he's taught us how to keep calm and carry on in any kind of crisis. And one of my favorite all-time characters in the Bible is King David. And I love that you've even got the little crown up there, so that reminds me of King David. But King David, if you read his life story, he went through stuff. I mean, he was hunted down by King Saul, you know, uh, just living in caves years and years, I think 12 years, hiding, all kinds of things. This guy has been through it. And he wrote many of the Psalms. And when you begin to read the Psalms, and I encourage every one of you, and you're going through stuff, read the Psalms, because there's some powerful stuff in there. But he wrote them. He knew what to do. And you'll see a pattern as you read them. You'll see how he, he's crying out to God, and then the next minute he's praising God, and all of a sudden everything's turning around, and it, it's really awesome stuff. But needless to say, he's an awesome, awesome man of God. God actually even called him a man after my own heart. And this is because I believe part of it is because he always ran to God for everything. He didn't sit there and try to do things on his own. He didn't say, well, this problem probably is too small for God. I better not bother him with it. He went to God for everything, and it's so important that we do that too. Don't fall into that trap of trying to jump into, you know, handle things yourself, jumping in through those rapids and saying, well, you know, I'm just going to go for it and let's see what happens. Go to God. But I want to tell you a story about David in Samuel 31. And this story was when David and his men, they were out going to battle. They came back. And they found out that their whole town had been ransacked and burned to the ground. These Amalekite raiders had come, taken all their stuff, everything they owned, their livestock, everything, their wives, their children, and they burned the whole city to the ground. Now, can you imagine these men coming back from, from battle and everything to nothing, and their families were gone? And I just say, you know, you men, could you imagine if you're at work and you come home and your whole family's gone? I mean, literally just gone. And what would you do? Could you keep calm and carry on? Could you just turn around and, and, you know, just say, okay, well, you know, I'll just move on in life? I don't think so. I mean, this is pretty heavy. So I just want you to grasp how heavy 
what David and his men were going through. And we pick it up at verse 4. It says, so David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength to weep. Now, one of the things I want to mention in here, do you see it says they wept aloud until they had no strength to weep. One of the things I learned through going through some things that I've been going through is something someone shared with me that was life-changing for me, and that was it's okay to not be okay. And when you're going through something pretty heavy, sometimes we as Christians, we fall into this so much. We've got to you know, show that God's given us the strength. We're, 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 you know, we're, we're good. Everything's great. I'm, you know, I'm good um, because I've got God. And, you, you know, we, we fall into that trap of wanting to show that we're this strong Christian. And we have to be so careful to realize that every one of us can be broken inside, can be wounded, and it's okay to not be okay to, to say to somebody, you know, they say, are you okay? It's okay to say no and just cry and weep and lose it, you know, especially with another friend who can pray with you, who can talk with you through it, who can just be there for you. Don't try to hide that you're not okay. God knows, and obviously he's going to help you, but there's friends, there's people who are here who will, who will just walk right along, alongside of you, help you, and then when it's their turn, you'll be able to help them. So I just want you to know it's okay to not be okay. There is a time of grieving. There is a time of just sitting there, you know, you're kind of in shock over something that hit you or you didn't expect. Maybe you've been diagnosed with an illness that you didn't expect. If it's, you know, cancer or something else, you know, horrible that's life-changing. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you're, you know, you don't, you just realized you're going to lose your house. All kinds of things could be coming at you. And there's a time where you need to just grieve and weep and kind of let the shock absorb and stay in the Psalms and read and go through that. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is once you kind of get that weeping, then it's time to start doing something, okay? And I just want to make that clear. But in verse 6, it says, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. They were actually going to stone David over this. That's how angry and upset they were. But then it says, this is the key, but David found strength in the Lord his God. That verse right there should be on everyone's wall in their house. David found strength in the Lord his God. John found strength in the Lord of his, his God. Patty found strength in the Lord her God. Everyone should be applying this to themselves because every one of us has that same ability that David did. Yes, God said he was a man after his own heart, but every one of us is after God's heart, and God is just loving every one of us. So we also can find the strength in God doesn't say David found strength in drinking or getting drunk, going down to the bar. It doesn't say David got, found strength in drugs or going off and having, you know, um, some kind of a one-night stand or just running out and, and lashing out at someone that they love or a, a family member or going shopping on a shopping spree with money you don't have just to feel better. It doesn't say David did that. And that's what so many times we tend to do in, our, in the natural. And we need to just say, no, I'm going to go find strength like David did in God. Okay, so David knew how to keep calm. Um, we could put that poster back up. I don't know if it's right there. No biggie. Thank you. <laughs> but he knew how to keep calm because he strengthens himself in the Lord. So how did he do that? Do we all want to know, well, how on earth do you strengthen yourself in God? Some of you know very well. Some of you may be so new to the Lord. Some of you, um, those that got baptized, I don't know if you're here in this room, but that was, that was just incredible. I mean, that's the start of an incredible walk with God. But some of you maybe don't know how to strengthen yourself in God. And I just want to share with you, one of the things God did was that he went and got in God's presence. And if you read the Psalms, you'll see David is always getting in God's presence. He, he describes God as my rock and my fortress, my tower of refuge. He just gets alone with God and sits. And then if you read his Psalms again, because he wrote a lot of the Psalms, and they're just like his own journal, he wrote, you know, wrote out everything that was bothering him. He got it out before God and said, you know, they're hunting me down. They're trying to kill me. I can't sleep. You know, I, I, Lord, I, you know, help me, help me. They're all cir circling around me. David was constantly going to God. 
sitting there before him saying, this is what's going on, God. You know, I need your help. And then he was finding a quiet place. And then, he, listen, this is something that is so important that we don't do, is listen for God's voice back. Tell him your problems, but then get still, get quiet, and begin to listen for that voice of the Holy Spirit within you. Because every one of you who have confessed Jesus as your Lord, you've asked him into your life to become your Lord of your life. Every one of you has his Holy Spirit inside of you. And you, if you listen hard enough in the still quietness, you can just feel impressions on your heart or hear his voice. There's different ways he speaks. You will, you will hear things in his word will jump off the page at you. Um, you know, songs, there will be things people will come say to you or in songs that you will know were from God, messages from God. There's so many ways. But my point is just to stay still with God. Get in his presence like David did and tell him your problems. And then I call it going to the ozone. I've done this for years and years. And um, when I say go to the ozone, I'm saying is learn about God and his character. The Bible says that he's omniscient, omnipotent, and uh, I forget the other one. Omnipresent, sorry. The th and I call them the three O's. And I just remind myself, okay, if I'm going through this, God is omniscient. He's, that means he's all-knowing. That means he knows not only what I'm going through, but he also knows the end of what I'm going through. He knows how this thing is going to turn out. And he also knows me. He knows you. He made you. He knows your personality. He knows everything about you. He knows how you're wired, whether you could handle this or whether you can't handle this. And trust me, trust me, you can handle a lot more than you think you can, and God knows it. And he is amazing what he does, how he just guides you through things slowly and helps you. So I always remember, okay, he's omniscient. He's omnipotent. It means he's all-powerful. means he's got the power. He could stop whatever you're going through like that. He could give you a job like that. He could give you a house like that. He could give you a spouse like that. He could give you, uh, you know, whatever financial problems you're having. He could have a check in the mail from some strange place. People have had that happen. God is all powerful and tomorrow, even today, even in an hour from now, your circumstances could be flipped right around. That's how cool God is because he does. He changes in a minute's notice. You just, you know, you should never, ever, ever give up hope because God will come and just change things around on his timing. But my point is, is that he is all powerful. So he could change it. And that's a, that's a comforting thought. He also can give you the power to endure if he chooses not to change it. And so the thing to keep in mind is no matter what, he's got the power, but he's also given you the power inside of you to endure through his Holy Spirit. So keep that in mind. And the other O is omnipresent. He's present everywhere. He's present with you. He's present inside of you. He's right there. So no matter what, you've got him right there on your side. If you even picture him sitting in the chair next to you, he's right there that in your circumstances, no matter what they are, God is with you. And don't ever forget that, you know, not only is he with you, but he's going to give you encouraging words. He's going to speak truth into your heart. He's going to speak power into your life. He's going to say, my child, I've got your back. I've got this thing. I've got control. Just trust me. Trust me. Trust me. And he will help you get through it. But you've got to focus on the fact that he is omnipotent, he is omniscient, and he is omnipresent. He's the, the ozone. Just go up there, and you will find that everything changes. Your circumstances may stay the same, but your perspective will be different, and you'll realize that somebody's got your back. So just keep that in mind. And then the other thing that I encourage you to do is to remember the past. When um, so many times we're told, forget the past, don't, you know, now I'm going to laugh every time I say let it go. Uh, first service I said let it go and I almost felt like I was going to break out into song, let it go. But every time I say that now it, it makes me think of that. But you, ha you know, people say let it go, let it go. Don't, you know, don't remember the past. Put it behind you. I'm not, I'm talking about remembering the past, but remember the past as far as what God has done in your life. And I make a, um, I call it my wall of faith. 
and I have a shelf, and I have things on that shelf that remind me of things that, of encounters I've had with God, or things that, that God has done in my life, if it's pictures, if it's little statues, whatever it is that reminds me. Um, I know of someone who has rocks from different places where he's had encounters with God. And what, what started me thinking on this was that if you read in the, in the Old Testament, you will see a lot of the people, um, every time something happened, they would make an altar of remembrance, so to speak, but they would make an altar there uh, out of rocks to remind them of what God did. When they crossed the Jericho, they, or Jordan, I'm sorry, they put rocks in the middle of the Jordan just to remind them that this, you know, God enabled us to cross over. There's always episodes and, and examples of different things that people did to remind themselves of their encounter with God or what he did. They named trees after God, you know, not after God, but I mean, named trees reminding them of something God did. There was a lot of that. They named kids, you know, to remind themselves of different things about God. So it's so important to remind yourself in whatever way you can, whether it's a hall of faith. Um, you know, I always think of athletes, how they put trophies up and things to remind themselves of their accomplishments. Well, let's start getting some reminders of God's accomplishments in our life. And maybe it's a scrapbook of the things God's done for you. Maybe it's just keeping a journal. Whatever it is, I'm telling you right now, when you are going through those rapids in life, you are going to need some things to remind you to increase your faith and build your faith because Satan will come out there and just start beating up on you and try to make you think, God's not real. God doesn't love you. He doesn't care about you. He's, he's busy working, you know, over here and doing this. He's forgotten you. He's not there. Satan will hit you and pound you like crazy. And when you are weak and down and sick or just discouraged or depressed, let me tell you, those darts can get in there. And a hall of faith, wall of faith is just a powerful way to remember. Um, I shared before... Uh, when we moved, I had a wishing well, a, a big one, like a, a six, seven foot wishing well in the front of our house. And my poor son, Matt, um, really didn't want to bring it because he had to be the one lugging it in the moving van. And he kept saying, Ma, can't we just leave the well? It looks so nice there. You know, it looks perfect. And I'm like, Matt, pack the, pack the well. You are bringing the well. And, and so, of course, he had to. And the thing was awful, heavy. But I really pushed to have that thing brought down because I put it in front of my house down in North Carolina because God used that to remind me that in the Old Testament, whenever um, people were going to a new area, they would always, the first place they would look is that obviously they needed to find water. And a lot of things, a lot of encounters with God, a lot of things happened at wells. But the water was very, very important, obviously. They needed that. So they would dig the wells to make sure they could water their animals, that they could get water. And it just reminded me that God, all through my years up here, it's always reminded me that God has taken care of me and he has provided the living water that I needed to survive, to live, to thrive. And God was going to do the same thing for me down there. And that's why it was so important for me to bring this well, because I know I serve a God who has living water that I can go to any time I need and I will, be not, I will not be thirsty, and I will have power and strength and everything that I need. So these are the kinds of things that I do to remember. But I encourage you, please make sure, if you can, do some kind of you know, altar of remembrance, remembering the past, so that you do not forget the things that God has done for you. And if you're new to the Lord and you don't have these memories yet, start making them. Start getting into God's presence. Start meeting with him. Get to know who he is. When you start having these encounters with him and you're like, whoa, this is really supernatural. You know, God really did this for me or he really saved me from this or he did that. You're going to be amazed. And that's where you need to start having your remembrances made also so that for the future you will remember. So bottom line is when the trials hit, when things start coming, just remember Keep calm, okay? Go, go to God immediately. Pray. Ask him for peace. Tell him your problems. Go to the ozone. Remind yourself of his character and who he is and how powerful he is so that your perspective can change. And then go to your wall of faith or whatever it is that you use to remind yourself of the things God's done before. And you'll be amazed at how he increases your faith. And then the other part of that... Uh, poster is carry on and that's the other part to me that is so sweet 
you know, I remember going through some things um, over the year, and there were so many times that I was ready to give up and just throw in the towel. And all I remember was that sweet voice of the Holy Spirit just saying, carry on, carry on. And I'm like, what does that mean? What do you mean, carry on? And eventually I learned that that meant keep going. Don't give up. Persevere. No matter what it is, persevere. Because God was telling me and he's telling you, I've got something better for you. I see the other side of the mountain. You don't see it. I got the bird's eye view. You're only seeing a mountain, but I see the other side. And he's telling you the same thing. Don't give up no matter what things look like. And I, the first thing that I have that I would encourage you to do is make sure you stay the course. So when you're not giving up, don't go down a path of bitterness. Don't go de- about down that path of fear, that path of, you know, well, if only, if only. That's a killer dart right there from Satan. If only, if only. Or I remember when, and I'm not talking about remembering God. I'm talking about remember when things were this way or that way. Or um, don't go down those paths. Stay the course. Keep it straight. That's the only way I can look at it. You know, when you are really going through some stuff, keep your eyes forward on God and stay the course. Don't give up because he's got something there. He's doing it for a reason. Don't fall into the trap of asking why. So many people, even good-natured people, um, you know, they're meaning well, and I understand, and there are reasons that we can know, but many times we don't know why God's allowing us to go through what we're going through. And you'll just, you just go down that path, and you just torture yourself with that, too. In Isaiah 55, 8, uh, the Lord says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. And just understand that he is all-powerful, he is all-knowing, and he knows why. We don't have to know why. We just need to trust him. So don't stop. Stay the course. Do what you can. Okay? Don't sit and and, um, fall into, you know, well, if I pray, you know, I'll just pray and I'll leave it alone. God will take care of it. God expects us to do our part also. And make sure you go to the Lord asking for wisdom, but do what you can. Anything that you need to do that God wants you to do. For example, David, after they came and they took their families, they took their animals, they took everything, David actually went to the Lord and he asked them, well, what should I do now? Should I go after them? And then it says in 1 Samuel 37, It says, then David went to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. So David didn't just sit around. He didn't get bitter and talk about stoning somebody like the men did. He said, okay. He wept. He went before the Lord. He got calm. He, he had the peace, and then he said, now I'm going to ask the Lord, what should I do next? And they went after them, and they got them. Not one person. They, everybody was fine. Everybody was alive. They got everything back because David went after them. And what I say to you is, how about you here? Is there anything that you need to go after? Is some, is the, has the enemy stolen your children? Has he gotten them so messed up, and you maybe you've given up, or maybe you just don't know what to do? Well, Go to the Lord. Don't give up and go after them and fight. Do not give up whatever you do. Maybe it's your kids, your marriage. Um, Maybe it's your joy is gone. The enemy's stolen your joy. Go after it. Get it back. And I'll show you how in a minute through praise. But go after it. Get that fighting spirit in you and don't give up. Don't let the enemy take any more territory. Don't let him take anything he's already taken get it back. And what I mean is spiritually, your joy, your, your hope, your, your confidence, your love for the Lord. Don't let the enemy take it because he will come and he will just start trying to grab what he can from you and make you, push you if he can further and further from the Lord, further and further from your joy, further and further from anything that you used to have if you're not careful. Um, I shared this in the first service. I'll share it again. It just reminded me of This story of this, I keep saying duck, but I found out in the first service he's a goose because he's got a long neck. He's one of those that bite you. Well, he, I used to take walks around my lake, and there was this goose that used to swim right on the edge where I walked. Well, every morning, the first morning I started, 
He let me go by, no problem. Second morning I started, he started coming after me and pecking at me. So I move over, you know, I'm like, okay, you can have your spot, I'm good, you know, and I walked and we went about our way. Well, the next day, he did it again, only this time, instead of five feet over, he came ten feet further and pushed me even further. And I'm like, doggone it, this, this thing is demonic, you know, what is this thing? So I'm, I'm like going further away. I must have looked like a total idiot with this bird chasing me, but I went about ten feet. Then I'm walking around the lake and I'm good. Next day I come, well, he keeps pushing me further and further. Before I know it, by the end of the week, I'm up on the road. I'm literally, when I got to that point of the lake, I had to go up on the road to stay away from this stupid bird that was, you know, chasing after me. And I'm sitting there on the road walking and I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. I'm afraid of a bird. You know, I, this is just so stupid. I can't even enjoy my walk and I'm, you know, moaning. The next thing I look over and here's this guy who's walking the same path I was. The dumb bird comes up to him and starts doing this, you know, like he's going to bite him. And the guy goes, get out of here, and goes like this. And the bird took off. So then the guy went about his way. So I was furious. I'm like, you mean that's all I had to do? I had to sit there and just do this, and then he would have gone away? So I'm like, okay, you're, you're in for it. Next day, I went over, and sure enough, the, the goose came over and started acting like he was going to bite me. And I just went over to him and I said, get out of here. And that thing ran. He took off into the water. And all this time, I fell for it and thought, you know, he's coming after me. He's going to bite me. And all I had to do was that. And I was furious. But the point was, is that I got intimidated by this bird because I just didn't have the, the you know, the power, the strength. All I had to do was speak the word and that bird would have been gone. But I didn't know that. And we have the power also. We have to, all we have to do is speak the word of God. We have to say, in the name of Jesus, you know, flee. The enemy has to flee. He does not want to be around. And we're going to talk about praise in a minute. But we have so much power within us through the Holy Spirit that the enemy cannot touch us. And yet we still, we let him take over things and we let him take our territory. So be careful and don't let him do that. Um, the other thing I want to tell you is pray. And we, we talked about it a little bit in the beginning, but that's your biggest weapon yet is to just pray. So if the, if the enemy's got your kids, if your you know, finances are not in order, you have problems, if you're losing your house, if you're sick or you're, 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 you need any healing, whatever it is, don't forget to pray and just go to the Lord and intercede because that is the, your biggest, most powerful weapon. And then... The last thing I want to share with you is when you keep calm, carry on, praise through. Don't forget the power of praise. David constantly, if you look in the Psalms, that's all he did was he would go cry out to God. He would tell him what was going on. He'd pray, ask him for help, and then he would praise God. You'll see the pattern as you read the Psalms. This isn't coincidental. He knew the secret. He knew that praise is the key to everything. And so I say if, if things are going bad and you're having a horrible time and, and you're trying to deal with life and there's some heavy stuff coming, even if it's feeble, even if you're weeping on the floor, start praising the Lord. Start finding those praise songs that you love and start singing them out because there's nothing more powerful than the power of praise. God says in his word that God inhabits the praises of his people. You will feel his presence so strong when you begin to do this. And there's a story that I read about this uh, gospel singer who I want to share with you. I'm only going to share you a piece because I lack of time, but it's powerful. And if you get a chance, read the whole thing. Um, it's written by this man named, he was a gospel singer, and his name was Roger Bennett, and it was called Midnight Meditations. And this man was battling cancer, um, very serious leukemia, uh, had spread everywhere. He was going through all kinds of things, and he shared this whole thing about how he would pray, and, and his prayers were hitting the ceiling, and he'd weep all night, and he just couldn't, you know, the enemy had gotten in and was just destroying him, pummeling him, telling him he's no good, and you write all these songs saying, you know, don't fear, and be, you know, God is great, and look at you, and here you are, you don't even know if you believe in God, and he's just really beat him up, beat him up, and finally, I'm just going to pull up here. It says, um, he says, if I can just doze off, this will pass by morning. But the clock seemed to move in slow motion. Sleep was nowhere near. I tried to lose myself in the Bible, but the words blurred to my eyes, and I couldn't make any sense of them. Every doubt I ever had sprang to my mind in terrible clarity. Suddenly, a thought sprang to my mind. Paul and Silas in jail. 
certainly a time of testing for them. The Lord brought to my mind that in their midnight hour, they didn't despair. They sang. It began to dawn on my heart that, when the, that their singing was not a fluke or a throwaway gesture. They sang, and it became their weapon. Jail bars broke, and they were set free. At that moment, I knew that singing at midnight was no metaphor. It was a literal description of what these two men used to bring their joy. So in my small, dark, lonely hospital room, I began to sing. Not in my heart, but with my weak voice I sang, Oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. One after another, these old songs came to my memory, and I sang them to my empty room. It wasn't a great performance from a musical standpoint. In fact, it was pretty trembly and off-pitch, but it may have been the most powerful blessing I've received in my life. I had an audience of three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but it felt like the whole world was listening. This is the truth if I ever spoke it. The battle turned then and there. I sang for one half hour, cried and thanked God for the victory, then dozed off and slept like a baby. My joy was waiting for me the next morning when I awoke. The enemy was nowhere to be fit seen. A sense of total confidence was in the room. I had found a weapon of great power, praise. If Paul and Silas had sung in the darkness of their prison, so could I. From the bottom of my heart, I tell you, it is real and Satan hates it. So the lesson for today sing not just anything sing the gospel paul and silas knew the secret and passed it on to us i'm telling you from firsthand experience that in my deepest valley yet it works it transported me instantly to a place of peace in the very presence of the father and my heart was strengthened and my faith in, faith increased thank god for the song of the redeemed and then he signs it into his presence with singing roger so just remember, praise is a powerful, powerful weapon, and you can't go wrong using it. It's going to give you just the, the strength you need and, the, and just the peace. And I'm going to go ahead and conclude by just saying, no matter what it is that God has allowed you to go through, do not forget that he's allowed you to go through it, that anything that happens has to pass through his hands first. So it's a comfort to know that God is not only in control of your life, but he's in control of the solution. He knows the solution. And all you have to do is trust him, put your feet first, keep calm and keep going, and then carry on and do what you have to do, whatever that is. And I have a, a little thing that I use whenever I'm going through stuff, and it just reminds me, it makes it easier for me to remember, and that's CPR. And it's basically... What do you do in an emergency? What do you do when the trials of life come, when you're in the rapids and things are happening? Just remember CPR. And the C stands for carry on. Don't give up. Keep going. Just don't give up. P is praise. Praise through until you break through. Don't give up praising no matter what's going on. And remember, and just remember who God is and what he's done for you. And you're going to be amazed that when you do get on the other side of that trial, you get at the end of those rapids, you are going to be a totally different person, rewired, and you're going to be sharing with other people what God has done for you. So let's pray. Lord, again, I just thank you for what you've done here. And, and Lord, what I just pray right now that anything that you've spoken to the hearts of everyone that's here, that, Lord, that that will just embed so deeply in their hearts, the CPR, that they will know that they need to get that training in. They need to start going to you and being in your presence and listening and learning what your still, small voice sounds like, and that they need to keep calm and carry on and do what they can, fight if necessary, but do everything that they need to do. And so, Lord, I just ask that you just touch every person that's in this room. And, Lord, if there's anyone in here that doesn't know you, I ask right now that they make this the day. And, Lord, that they come to know you in a new and powerful way. Lord, that they be, just pray to you and ask you to be Lord of their life. And they begin to make these memories, these encounters with you. And that they begin to walk forward with you and know that from this day forward, everything may not change as far as the rough times to go through. But now they have a weapon to go through it with. And that they will remember to just keep calm, put their feet first and then carry on. And we just give you glory right now and praise you, Lord, because you are awesome. In your name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. <clears throat> and I, I